Are you doing everything right with keto and intermittent fasting but still not losing weight? Well, in today's video, I'm going to talk about some things that the YouTube gurus may not be telling you about. Hey everyone, this is Stephanie from Fast Track to Health Wellness Center. Welcome. So I'm going to get right into it. So as many of you probably already know, I personally have done really well with low carb slash keto slash intermittent fasting over the last year and a half or so. I've lost about 25 pounds and I've kept it off and it's been working really great for me. What does that mean that it's going to work really great for you? Not necessarily, because everybody is, is different in some way or another. So even if you're doing everything right with keto and intermittent fasting, you're counting your macros, you're eating the right foods, you're fasting at the appropriate times, there still could be some other areas that need to be addressed first in order for a keto and intermittent fasting to work. So let's get into it and stay tuned to the end because those of you who are fasting, you're really gonna to wanna to hear this information. So the first, and I would say the number one thing that we see at our clinic is stress. Stress is playing a huge role in why you may not be losing weight when you're doing everything right. Well, why is that? Well, your hormones control so much of your metabolism and your physiology. So if you are stressed out or don't think you're stressed out, but really your body thinks you're stressed out and your cortisol levels are high, well, believe me, it's going to block your weight loss because when you have excess cortisol, you have excess estrogen, so that interferes with progesterone and it also slows down your thyroid, okay? So having too much cortisol is not necessarily a good thing on an ongoing basis. So this kind of stress and these hormonal changes can block your hormone receptors on your cells and cause all kinds of other issues. I'm gonna make an actual separate video on this exact topic of excess cortisol, so look out for that. And in the meantime, you can also check out my other videos on adrenal issues because I do talk a lot about how you can manage and handle your adrenals to make the stress situation a lot easier. So that's the number one thing is stress. So please make sure you're working on that. So next is toxicity. Now I know t detoxing and toxins are a very big popular buzzword, but you know, it may seem woo woo, but it's, it's real. Like we are bombarded with chemicals in our environment. We're exposed to over 80,000 chemicals on a regular basis. What does this mean for your weight? Well, lots of things. If your body is not able to handle the amount of toxins in your body, it's going to make it difficult to lose weight. Your body stores the toxins in your fat cells. So if you're not efficiently removing the toxins from your body, it could slow down your weight loss. So I'm going to also make a separate video on this as well so I can give you some strategies on what you can do to detox your body in a healthy way with a combination of diet and supplements but just keep in mind that this could be one of the reasons why so if you're in a job where you're exposed to lots of chemicals or just really living on planet earth toxicity is a big issue especially if you live in the United States so toxicity and excess toxins could be another reason why you're not losing weight. So the next one, and this is a big one because a lot of people are eating foods that are considered keto and low carb, but they could be causing other issues if you have a problem with them. So inflammatory foods or foods that you're sensitive to, they could be slowing down your weight loss because even though they might be considered the right type of food for the diet that you're doing, your body may be telling you something otherwise. In other words, if you're eating foods that are for you inflammatory or you're sensitive to, your body might be holding on to excess weight, especially fluid retention. Some of the foods in the keto category that you may be sensitive to and don't realize it are foods like dairy, pasteurized dairy especially, nuts and seeds, those are big ones too. So keep in mind that it could be something that you're eating that's keto and low carb, but your body is having an issue with. So I'm going to do another video on this as well, but in the meantime, you might want to consider doing some kind of elimination diet where you take out certain foods that you suspect you might have an issue with and see if your body naturally starts to release some of the weight or some of the fluid for when you stop eating the foods that you could potentially be sensitive to. Now we're going to get to the macronutrients that you're eating. So when you're doing keto and low carb, obviously you're doing a higher amount of fat and less amount of carbohydrates. However, and especially if you're a woman, you may need to sometimes eat more carbohydrates. And I'm not saying like the bad refined sugar type of carbohydrates, 
but there are certain type of carbohydrates that may be beneficial to you, especially at certain times of the month for women. But again, it goes back to the hormone thing that we talked about earlier. Certain types of foods will help balance your hormones. So if you're a woman and you've been doing really strict low carb and keto and you're plateauing, your body might be saying, I need something else. I might need to have a little bit more carbohydrates here and there. So you should experiment with eating more carbohydrates, especially at certain times of, your, of the month, especially around your period. Check out my video on this with, with women and weight loss that I did uh, before. This goes into a little bit more detail about that. But in any case, you should try adding a little bit of carbohydrates, especially like at dinner time. So if you do like, your first meal or second meal without any carbs, then that last meal of the day, add some healthy carbs into your diet. Even though you might the next day not weigh what you wanna weigh, over time your body might start dropping weight because you're getting some more carbohydrates and you're helping out your hormonal ratios. So experiment with different types of macro ratios. Don't do the same thing all of the time. So next, and this is very important for all of you fasters out there, I am a huge fan of fasting, I love it. I do intermittent fasting almost every day. I've done lots of long fasts, 24s, 48, 72 hour water fasts, and that's been really beneficial. And there are lots of health benefits to fasting, but if you're doing the same thing all of the time, that can also be a reason why you're not losing weight. So try doing a variety of different types of fasts. In other words, if you're doing the same type of intermittent fasting every day, where you do 16 hours of fasting and eating within an eight hour window, try to mix it up. In other words, maybe change the time of when you're eating or maybe change the duration. So in other words, instead of doing it daily, maybe only do it five days a week and then the other two days you're not fasting, or you can add in some more longer fasts here and there, maybe a 24 hour fast or a 48 hour fast. And don't forget to add in the feasting because if you're fasting too much too often, that again can be a potential issue because we never historically ate the same thing all the time. Our ancestors were always you know, eating at different times of the day, eating different foods. So you have to give your body the same variety even when it comes to fasting. So make sure you try different types of fast, different lengths of time, and then throw in those feast days here and there where you kind of eat basically whatever that you want. All right, so I hope this was helpful you guys. And if you have any questions or you need our help, we're here to help you. Check out the links below if you wanna get in touch with us. We offer a free consultation so we could get you on the right track. And again, look out for the next series of videos coming out on most of the topics that we discussed in more detail in the coming videos based on what we talked about here. Again, thank you guys for watching and please share this video with someone that you know that may be struggling, who's doing keto or intermittent fasting and having some issues. All right, thank you guys and I'll see you next time.